sensory acuity, it's about switching your senses on. Now, because we've got three groups of three, this is going to be quite good. Because we're going to have one observer, one actually doing the technique, and the other having it done to them. Right? A, B, and C. Right? So, the exercise is pretty simple. What you're going to do is you're going to get, can I just use you, uh, uh, you three, I'll take this side of the room, it's easier to service. Right, this is what you're going to do, right? Yeah. Let's use these chairs. <coughs> you and Danny, right, I'm going to sit facing each other. This is where we use our visual acuity, it's what we can see in front of us. And what you're going to do, Lee, is you're going to sit and watch this, okay? You're just going to sit there and observe the interaction, yes. right? You might get something out of it, most people do. You might not. You might go, I don't even know what I was looking for then. Okay? But be totally honest when we have the debrief. Now, what you're going to do, Danny, you're going to say to Tony, you're going to get him to close his eyes, right? And this is where we start, we're actually starting to teach a hypnosis now. Right? I remember a hypnotist, a hypnotherapist, she said to me, she said, there's something I've always wanted to ask you, because you're a really good hypnotist. I went, oh yeah. She goes, how do you get people? to sort of close their eyes. I went, dead easy, I go, Tony, close your eyes, mate. Thank you. And she went, no, but I mean, don't you go, oh, well, your eyes are getting heavy and heavier. No. Okay, now I forgot where I posed someone. I said, Tony, how do you do, mate? Let's sort this out for you. Close your eyes and listen to the sound of my voice. So, so don't worry about going, oh, you're getting heavy. That's shit. Just tell them to close your eyes. I do what Bamba does, he walks up and sleep. And we go, oh, <laughs> shit, what you done, Rich? <laughs> I don't know. I guess he's gone. <laughs> he's not aware. He's not like you. <laughs> I know. Right, have spent time with him. <laughs> right, so what you're going to do, Danny, you're going to get him to close his eyes, right? So Tony closes his eyes. And you're going to say to him, and listen, it not have to be the exact words, but this is a good template. I want you to go back and think of a time when you're with somebody you really like. Okay? Seeing that person as they are in your mind's eye, hearing the sounds their voice might make, and notice the feelings you're getting about this person now. Right? Okay? That's part one of the exercise. And what you're going to do, Danny, is you're going to look for any physiological changes, state changes. You see, because when you're sitting with someone getting a rapport, this, you should be looking at them. You should be noticing the reaction you're getting from the words you're using. And you calibrate to those things. So you see, when I first met Tony, I get him in a good state by having a chat with him. And I know, I know when Tony's in a good state. So I can, you know, if I haven't seen Tony for ages, I have in my memory banks and go, I know what Tony looks like, what he sounds like, when he's feeling good. So I'll meet Tony, I'll talk to him like this, and we'll do the physiology. And, and he'll be like, ah, oh, brilliant. Because you might not see your client more, you know, you might see your client more than once. You might see them two or three times. And you might have lots of clients. You need to calibrate these things. So this is what we're doing. We're measuring responses to somebody he likes. Right? And then we, we do a thing called breaking state. Breaking state is when you say, right, what job do you do again? Talk about something completely unrelated. Break state. So we take them out of the good state. Okay? Then... Once we've broken the state, we do the second part of the exercise. The second part of the exercise is this. Right, Tony, I want you to close your eyes again, and this time think about somebody you don't like. And when you think about that person, see what you would see, hear the sounds their voice would make, and notice the feelings you're getting. And as you think about that person, you'll see the physical change. The visual stuff in this exercise is probably the easiest. Because we tend to use our eyes more than these, as we'll see. Okay? Now that's a generalization of no, but it's a pretty well substantiated one. So you're really now switching on the visual senses to see what's happening physiologically. You might see things like lip size changes, the skin color changes, it goes tight or relaxed. There might be tiny micro movements, or there might be absolutely massive movements. I always go for the big stuff, right? So when I'm doing work, I get that, I would say to Tony, so come to your eyes, do this for real. Think about somebody you really like, Tony. 
When you think about that person in there, double the feeling, that's right, double the feeling. When you see them in your, that's right, because you can see them in your mind's eye, can't you? Hear the sounds their voice make, and how good does that make you feel? Double that feeling, then double it again, then double, that's right, then crank it up. So wherever those feelings are moving in your body, they're moving faster than they've ever, that's right, double that, double that again, and then relax. Okay, no guys. Now that's what I want to have people. Mm. That's, that's the response I want, I don't want this. I want fucking powerful stuff coming back. <clears throat> yeah? Because now I've got something to work with. So I know when I say, what about that person you were thinking about earlier? Boom, instant response. Mm. So don't be afraid to, to just go mad in here. This is where we rehearse. You know, it's like well, you know, those of you who teach martial arts, you know, when you get to rehearse, let's do it, man, come on. Nobody's going to get hurt. We're in a safe environment. In here, you're in a completely safe environment. If some of the exercises go, ooh, and you feel like you're deaf, go, bob, and I'll go, oh, brilliant, look what you've done to this person. <laughs> now let's change it. Okay? So you get the impact. Do you notice when I was uh, doing that myself, the state I went into? I went there first. I went there first. So I'm going to get hit and think about somebody like, so what do I do? Think about somebody I like. I've got a rapport with Tony. He'll pick up on that as well. And he'll want to go there with me. So always go there first, then take the client. Right, do you understand the exercise? And then, uh, what I'm going to suggest you get to the moment, but in there are big stuff today, you know? I don't want to have people breaking down in front of a group. You know, um, if you can think of trauma as one of your major therapeutic. So you've got to switch on your ears, right? What you're going to do, you're going to say the same thing to Tony. I want you to go back and think of that person you really like. I say that. My eyes. You, you can if you want. Okay. If that makes it easier. It yeah. Matter. If it makes it easier to close your eyes to visualize, do so. If not, keep your eyes open. So you're going to say to him, Danny, uh, see what you would see, hear what you would hear, feel what you would feel as if you were with that person now. Same as before. When he's at the height of the experience, which you can't see, Get it to double the feeling, double the feeling, double the feeling. You'll get a sense when you're ready. Say to Tony, okay, while you're thinking about that person now that you really like, you're going to count from one to ten. Okay? So Tony will just go one, two, three, four, five. Listen, because you'll know his tonality, the speed of rate in which he speaks, the quality of the words, those things, right? Then you break state. Slap around the back of the ear, but he's not expecting, whoa, what was that? Big fat cocks. Yeah? <laughs> Running around the playground. Right, it's something I shared with Karen earlier on. <laughs> not a big fat, not a big fat cock, obviously. Yeah, big bollocks. fat cocks. Purple bollocks or something like that. Purple anything. Yeah, change state. And then get Tony to think of the person he doesn't like, or the state he doesn't like. Yeah? See what he sees, hear what he hear, feel what he felt. Get him to count from 1 to 10 again. Then, you break state, and then you say, right, Tony, pick either the first one or the second one. Go back to that time, see what you see, hear what you hear, feel what you feel, count to 10 for me. And then you've got to say, it was the first one. Oh, it was the second one. These are auditory senses, unless you're an auditory person, or not senses you normally use to this level. But these are the qualities you've got to listen for in someone's voice, in their communication. There's something about the quality of a voice that tells you a lot about the state the person's in. And this is all very much an individual thing. Yeah, you make sense of that? Yeah. Okay. Uh, carbon dioxide is uh, 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 It just gives me an inkling of what they're doing, of okay. what they're thinking. Okay. You know, I, I, wouldn't, I would never say that someone was lying off the back of one, or, you know what I mean? Because I right, don't know okay. enough of that. Right. But well, you just you, you're not, a, you start to notice yeah, it. Absolutely. Right. Because that's, that's the first step, obviously, is we start to notice how these things are happening with people. You know, their physiology, their changing state. And it's what we do with it, that, that's what this course is about, really. Yeah. It's about the practical application of the techniques. Eye access and cues, right? Let's start at basics. Pamela and all this, right? And got a lot of interest from the psychological community, okay? It's Alan, obviously. Not to make Tully. Right. <laughs> Most people don't know Mick Tully, but Mick Tully looks like this. <laughs> tell that with me. Yeah, you can. <laughs> that is Mick Tully. Mick Tully. <laughs> Get a sign of it. It's like a bigger chin. <laughs> yeah, all right. Yeah. Bigger <laughs> body. Yeah. We haven't got enough paper yeah. to have his oh, body. Yeah. This is actually life size as well. Mick Tully has a head that big. <laughs> <laughs> 
He's five year old boy, he's said that. Yeah. <laughs> Some of us call him moon face. Yeah. <laughs> he actually affects the menstrual cycle of women when he's near them. <laughs> and small children get caught in a geostationary orbit around his body and cannot escape the gravitational pull. He is actually a cosmological phenomenon. <laughs> you can tell him all that if you remember what I say. Because I can't. Okay, Bandler uh, did some quite interesting research in the 70s, which involved the direction in which people apparently look when they're in different states. When they're thinking about things, motivation, confidence, day-to-day -day stuff, right? <laughs> and when he explained this to this group of psychologists uh, at a conference in Harvard, uh, they were quite shocked because uh, this is an amazing piece of research. Where did you do it? And he said, in a supermarket. He said, have you ever noticed when you walk around the supermarket, uh, yeah, you know, yeah, you write your fucking list, and you know, eggs, beans, bacon, you know, and you go to the supermarket and you go, fuck, I forgot the list. <laughs> <laughs> and you see people who forgot their list going, yeah, you know, eggs, bacon, beans, mm. Mm. yeah. He said, they, they visualize, this is one specific person, they visualize the list, ah, that was what was on the list, Hmm, are you sure about that? Talk to themselves about it and go, ah, that's right, and get a good feeling about it. That's where you noticed it. Supermarkets are the best place to look for access and cues, because it's people making decisions <laughs> about things. You have any conversation with anyone, in fact, you guys have all been looking at me, you must have noticed where my eyes go when I talk about certain things. Yeah? You look at me. Okay, I'll look at you. <laughs> but you actually, you know where you are? You are where I keep my feelings, Tommy. <laughs> <laughs> it's absolutely right. When I've talked about feelings, you watch what I do. When I talk about kinesthetic stuff, I do that with this hand. And I go over that way. If I'm talking about, if I'm teaching you guys internal dialogue, I can't help it. It's, it's why I did. <laughs> That's where I do my internal dialogue. When my eyes look down there, that means I'm talking to myself about something. When I do that, I'm, I'm actually visually remembering real things that have happened. And if I'm trying to create something, I'm making it all, it's up there. This is me, right? Now we've all got eye access and cues to some degree or, or another. Some, some eye access and cues are really overt. You'll probably, you can probably think of some people who do it now. People that you've known or worked with, people you might even live with, they'll go, oh yeah, I see what you're saying. And they go, I see, and they'll look up, I see what you're saying. Now Banner noticed this going on, and he said, uh, obviously it's a brilliant way of increasing rapport. Because if Tony says to me, uh, what's the colour of your car? Silver. Silver, what sort of car is it? BMW, what model is it? Did you buy it for any particular reason? Ah, right, there you go, we've got one. Big yeah, one. Yeah. Now, you see, because he knew I was looking for high access and cues, <coughs> and this is going to happen when we do the exercise, you're going to go. <laughs> <laughs> so I just chat on with it. And he went, oh. he had to do it then, because I just chill, I relaxed, changed state. And he went into another relaxed state. What did you do to me? You clocked it. I clocked it. You clocked yeah, it. It was massive. Yeah, well, it was yeah, the biggest yeah, physiological yeah, change you've ever seen. Your whole body went to over there. I feel insecure. I feel like This woman, this woman, I saw this woman come in with a seminar, one of Paul McKenna's seminars, and she was like half an hour late, right? And she, everybody, all 700 people in the room, we went, oh, she's late. She comes, she's going, oh, oh, and her seat was right down at the front like that. She's going, oh, excuse me, sorry, sorry, oh, sorry. Sorry, and this our state was intensified all the way down like that. And man was gone. And he deliberately did it, he's gone. You okay, man? And she's gone, oh, yeah, oh, I'm really sorry I'm a bit late. He goes, yeah, double left feeling. <laughs> <laughs> and she goes, oh. Everybody laughs, she goes, oh. And he goes, I'll see you later. <laughs> Poor woman, bro. she's like sweating. <laughs> so, we saw massive change there where he looked in a specific direction. I battled away with him, because I knew when you do an eye access and keys and start talking about it, people will do that. What I suggest you do in order to get the most from exercise, just relax, be yourself, and just accept that your eyes will move around in your head, that's normal. 
and that will give your partner a little bit of time to actually learn about how this works. Now, for me, I'll do it quickly on me rather than bringing someone out for a demo, okay? For me, when I visually remember things, if you guys were to say to me, for example, you know, what could I cut? Ask me a question about something where I'd have to make a picture of my head. How do you pants? Which pants? <laughs> Which ones? Which ones? Ones? <laughs> <laughs> Mark. Mark. Yeah. Which ones? Uh, the ones you wore yesterday. That's a good question, you see, because I've got to go back in time as well. Yeah, um, blue. Blue. Yeah. You see where my eyes went? Yeah, yeah. Up there. So, you're going to do this for your partner more. So, I visually remember things that way. So, we're going to use a notation VR. V for visual, R for remembered. Okay, now that means that when I visually construct things, in other words, come up with new ideas for things, or I lie, I'll probably look that way. Okay, they're using these in interrogation now. They're training people to use this in interrogation. It works a treat. <laughs> you know about interrogation. I've been involved in it. So I visually construct stuff. So if you guys said for me, uh, oh, um, I heard you were up Mount Everest. I go, yeah, I'd have to do this to make it up. And then possibly remember a couple of times I've been on similar mountains. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I would visually access over here, meaning I'm lying to you. It's sometimes, you know, you meet someone, you go, they're fucking lying, but you don't know how. It's probably because you've seen, you've unconsciously picked up the eye accessing cues. And if something doesn't fit, so guess what? You lose rapport. They look at the floor. Or they look at the floor, they're feeling bad. But you, you watch, you watch. When it, when it happens, you'll notice it. Okay, now, let's jump from there to these here. Because people seem to access those very readily. One of them is internal dialogue. In other words, chat to yourself. So I don't know if this course is going to be any good. You know, I've got all these people in front of me, and a lot of them in a very odd way. Yeah? And some of you are, right. especially the man close to me on my right. <laughs> That's it. So That's, <laughs> <laughs> That's good. No, no, no. I meant uh, Danny or <laughs> Danny. Or, uh, there's a lot of people on my right. Colin's over there in the corner. Maybe you double my feeling. Oh, undouble it. Undouble it. So when I run internal dialogue, if, if you guys said to me, or oh, recite a poem like Mary Had a Little Lamb in your head. I would do that. Obviously you can't say that to your client, can you? So what I usually do is, the first thing I say to a client, I admit to them, I say, oh, did you manage to get parked okay? Or if they came on a bus, I say, oh, what bus did you get? And they'll go, oh yeah, I got the number 15 and I could just walk up through by the shops and, uh, oh, wow, brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Good bus journey? Oh, God, oh, shit. Nah, foolish. It's not that gym opening again, is it? <laughs> no. But, I mean, for me, when I'm talking about my feelings, so I always ask a question related to feelings. You know, um, have you heard of NLP? What do you think of it? Um, do you remember a time when you, you, know, you saw a previous therapist? What was it like? Oh, it was pretty shit. And you'll see them look down into the direction where they're accessing feelings. Okay? So you see, even when I talk about feelings, I use this hand because it's in that direction. For me, kinesthetic stuff is all down there. Okay? So I've determined where. I visually remember things, therefore I construct on that side. I've now worked out, kinesthetically, I tend to look down to my right, or point to my right when I'm talking about feelings. Which means my internal auditory dialogue, which we already have discovered, is down here for me. This is when I talk to myself, internal dialogue. We all have internal dialogue. Now that's my map. We've got two of the missing things. It's pretty obvious what they are. They must be auditory, mustn't they? Because they'll have with the ears. And it seems to be a generalization, an absolute generalization. I've never seen it any different. That if someone visually remembers over this side, they will auditorily remember on that side and kind of um, construct auditorily on that side. And that, ladies and gentlemen, of my I am accessing cues. You say everybody's different, so different people can get those and they can't Yeah, I mean, Tony visually remembers over there, which actually is the same as me. 
Yeah. So how could you decipher then if somebody's employing deception, i.e. if they're making something up? Right, because what you do is you get something that confirms reality. Like, um, oh, you know you're tripping at the office today. How was that? Well, oh, yeah, pretty uneventful, yeah. Got stopped in traffic as usual. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I'm just picking up two cues there. So, all right, so where were you on the night of the... They saw you as a copper. Because he did an NLP practitioner course with Richard. I sent him one, I paid for it when he come back from Iraq. And he used it all the time. He says, so easy. He says, so then, so, what are you doing around here? Nope, no good. Uh, uh, no, I'm just hanging around with my mates. All right, all right. Didn't I see you in the park the other week? Uh, yeah, 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 which you did, which is real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what were you doing by that house down the road? I was, uh, what house? I, I never saw you. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, shit. Instantly you've got that level of deception. Obviously, if you're not an interrogator, you use this from a therapeutic context. You want to find out where people remember, where they get their feelings, where their internal dialogue's coming from, how they, how they remember things auditorily. Because it's great for building rapport. Because now I can say to Tony, you know, if you remember a time when you felt really good, I'm going to access where he really remembers things. His unconscious is going to go, you know, I quite like that, Bob. He really understands me. And it's all about getting an understanding. Having real empathy with someone, as opposed to just listening to their shitty story. And not getting anything other than feeling bad from it. And that's not what it's about. There is another absolutely key thing that you can do once you've got these. When you're chatting, having a seemingly, you know, random conversation with someone, you notice where they access their eyes when they're talking about the strategy they have for doing something. You can do all sorts of shit with them, unconsciously. So access to them, massive, huge. Control. They're more powerful, than anything. They help build rapport, and if anything builds rapport, these do, because they're really unseen. Nobody, nobody makes. Nobody cares if I go, I'll tell you what, Tony, remember that time we talked about uh, trending on the USB course? You say, all I'm doing is accessing that. How'd that make you feel? I mean, and that, it just instantly brings back stuff and that much quicker. I mean, I've already got rapport with you, so I don't need to labour that point at all. Um, you're like putty in my hand. It's such a bit mean, isn't it, fellas? It's just to be on the other course at all. No, no that's only because you. It's because you can take a joke. You're all the same as me. You know what he shouts at the last course? I was crapping with a guy on the floor. He went, what are you doing at your age? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I said. To Put me. an idea in his head. <laughs> Can he smile like that? <laughs> so it was a good thing. <laughs> you're just your age with a man on the floor. You should be with a man on the floor. You're rich. Thank God, you should have learned a few things by now. So, um, I'll, I'll, I'll let you into the secret here because we're going to use this at some time in the next couple of days. Um, this is an example of how you use eye accessing cues. A girl came to me, she said, um, do you know what it is, Bob? It's really daft thing. She said, but I, I can't get up in the mornings for work. I said, well, pack your job in. She went, no, I can't just do that. I said, well, what answer do you want? She said, well, um, I've got to do my job because I need the money. I said, right. She said, but I just need to be able to get up in the morning really early. I said, oh, okay. I said, well, tell me what happened. What do you do in the mornings? She said, well, this is exactly what she did with eyes. Okay, I'm going to do it in my direction, obviously. It's more comfortable for me. She goes, well, I hear the alarm. I ask this way, right? She goes, I hear the alarm. And then um, she goes, um, well, she goes, uh, I feel. I said, what do you, what is it? You feel what? She goes, ooh. She goes, I feel the warmth in the sheets. I said, oh, she goes, it's really nice. And I said, right, imagine you're there now. Go back to that time. You're lying in bed. See what you see. Hear what you hear. Feel what you feel. Mm. And I pointed where she was looking. I said, you hear the alarm? She went, yeah. I said, then you... And she went, she went oh, feel the warmth of the sheets. I went, right, okay. I said, but something makes you get out of bed. I said, let's run this program. You hear the alarm. Feel the warmth of the sheets. Put it on snooze. I put it on snooze. Right, you put it on snooze. She goes, yeah. So how many times do you do that before you get out of bed? She goes, 
well, God, about five or six times. She said, then, then, she went like this, then, I see myself, she said, I've got to be out of bed, I've got to get out of bed, I'm going to be late for work. And she said, then I'm in a panic and I get to work and I have a shit day. I said, right, because you build the stress levels up and then go to work. Brilliant. I said, that's a fucking awesome strategy for making yourself ill. She goes, I know, I've got to change it. 50 quid, please. <laughs> yeah, don't do that, now go. Cool. So I said, right, hang on a minute. I said, let's play the strategy through. Hear the alarm, <clears throat> feel the motivations. Hear the alarm, feel the warmth of the sheets. Hear the alarm, feel the warmth of the sheets. See yourself being late for work, getting bullied by your boss and going, oh, feel bad, feel bad, run to work. She goes, that's it, exactly, that's it. Right, let's do another one. She went, what, I said, watch my finger, the magic finger of NLP. She went, oh, I heard that one. That was all the factory. <laughs> I don't know how you all made, made assumptions. <laughs> I didn't say that, I could have been touching my nose. <laughs> my reality. I said, right, are you ready? She went, yeah, imagine you're lying in bed. She went, right. I said, hear the alarm. She went, I can hear it. I said, see yourself getting out of bed, getting to work on time, feeling fucking great. I goes, how does that sound? She went, um, <laughs> I don't know. I said something to myself. I said, what did you say? She goes, oh, that's great. I went, brilliant. Let's use that. And I sat with her for about 15 minutes doing that. Hear the alarm. <laughs> See yourself getting out of bed, feeling good. Yeah, feel good, feel good, feel good. <laughs> what do you say to yourself? She goes, it's fucking great. I don't normally swear. I said, is it good? She goes, it's great. Taught her that strategy. So her new strategy is, and it worked. She rang me up a couple of days later. She heard the alarm, she said, and an idea popped me and I was going to get to work on time. She said, I felt great. I said, what do you say? She went, it's fucking great. I went and got a shower, I went to work. Oh, there you go. That's another way of using eye access and cues. I don't think you find them in the books, actually. Because no. I, I don't read the books. Are they in the books like that? No. I've not seen them in any books. I've seen these diagrams. Yeah, but do they talk about strategies like this? No. Have you seen anything He's like that? He's not a man No. <laughs> <laughs> Now you can do that, I could have done it in a matter of fact way, but this girl was so bubbly and so like in your face, I, I just was in her face. And it was like bang, 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 I said, great isn't it? She was going, oh, that's brilliant. I didn't know I even did that with my eyes. And of course people go, everybody does it. Yeah. You've taken blue pill. <laughs> You're on the correct side of reality. So people are doing this all the time and they're not aware of it. But and you can influence it. Places with different people. Absolutely. Well, the only, the only thing you'll see, Tom... Is it any constant? No. <clears throat> the books will have you believe. The books will have you believe that right-handed people visualise remembered stuff on the left. Mm. And, obviously, for right-handed people... There's, that's there's never a case where people access information from downwards. Well, downwards usually feelings or internal dialogue. Yeah, yeah that's the standard. Is the standard is this. Visual stuff, is te visual stuff tends well, to I mean, be here. I mean, uh, people don't access visually down there. No, no. no. Is that constant? That's constant. Yeah, that was proved as a constant. Mm. So if we, if we take the general rule, visual stuff is here, auditory stuff is here, yeah, this level, kinesthetic, internal dialogue, here. <coughs> That's the constant. <coughs> Which direction they're in is up to the person. But what they do on the practitioner course, I've seen them do on a number of practitioner courses that Paul McKenna's run when I facilitated there with Richard. And he gets people to sit down and go, I want you to remember the colour of your front door. Right. Okay. Now, can you imagine what it was?